Hello and welcome, it's Machine Dana and in this chapter we're going to be covering the download and install and then the configuration of OBS Studio. Download and installation of OBS Studio. Here we need to visit obsproject.com. This is where you're able to download a Windows, Mac or Linux version of OBS Studio. Just select the operating system that applies to you. I'm selecting Windows here and it will automatically try and download the file. You need to give permission for this. It's quite a small file, so this should only take a couple of seconds to download, depending on the speed of your internet. And we've got the installer now downloaded. So we just click onto the installer and it will start the process of installing this on your device. Now at this point, the installer takes over. They will basically do the grunt work for you here. So if you just click next and choose a directory, agree to the license information, the directory that you choose Probably I would recommend keeping this as the default directory, but you may have a specific drive that you want to place this on. So just uh, that's obviously personal preference. I'm choosing here just a test directory that I've got because I've already got OBS Studio installed on my PC. So I'm going to delete this later. Next, you just click install and the installation process will start. This shouldn't take too long. It typically takes just a couple of seconds to do. Once that's complete, you've got the option to launch OBS Studio and you just click finish. So when you first open OBS Studio, you'll be greeted or you should be greeted with an auto configuration wizard. At this point, basically, OBS Studio is offering to help you define what your settings should be. Now, if this doesn't appear, don't worry. I'll show you later on in the video where you can find the auto configuration wizard. It's within the tools tab and we'll show that later. Now I'm going to choose to optimize for streaming and recording is secondary. And if you're mainly going to be using OBS for streaming, that's what you should choose too. And we're getting into here information about resolution. For resolution, I'm selecting 1920 by 1080 as that's my screen's canvas resolution that I want to use. And for frames, I'm selecting 60 frames per second. But you can also auto scale and there's some other changes that you can do here. Don't worry too much about that for now. If you just want to start with 1920 by 1080, it's probably a good start, unless you're running a weaker PC, in which case you might want to reduce that down a little bit. I'm selecting 60 frames per second here. And the reason is because I've got quite a good PC and I know that that will be fine for my PC to run. But if you've got quite weak hardware, you may want to consider using 30 frames per second instead of 60 frames per second. And that'll just reduce the load on your hardware and increase the smoothness of your stream, even though there'll be fewer frames. So now at this point, we're just going to connect our Twitch account. At this point, you'll be asked to log in once you try to connect. So just input your username and your password, and hopefully you've got two-factor authentication on as well. So you'll have to do all of that. Now you'll need to click the authorization button just to authorize OBS Studio to be used with your Twitch account. And that just authorizes the API. Now at this point, we can choose to enable hardware encoding or not. Now with hardware encoding, what it essentially does is it takes the load off the rest of your PC, your CPU and your processor mainly, and it will put some of the hardware loading and the processing onto your graphics card. More modern graphics cards will help reduce the load of your CPU, but if you've got an older graphics card or perhaps you have a stronger CPU and a weaker graphics card, you might want to consider not turning on hardware encoding. If you've got very good graphics card we'd recommend leaving hardware and coding turned on and you can also now choose whether you want obs studio to estimate the bit rate that should be used when you're streaming now that we've connected it to twitch now what this will do obs studio will essentially run like a wizard to test the internet that you're running at the moment and essentially try and estimate how much bit rate it should allow for your stream uploading to twitch now you can choose to not run this wizard. I'm gonna very quickly run this wizard because it will give me some estimation on what the bitrate was would be. Now I've actually got quite a good internet here, so I already probably know it's gonna be very high. Uh, but if you've got weaker internet, this will be a good indication of whereabouts you should be placing your bitrate for your stream. Now at this point, it's recommending that we do 6,000 kilobits per second upload video rate. And also it's saying that we should use the hardware NVENC encoder. That's because my graphics card has an NVENC encoder capability, but yours may not have this. I'm gonna actually click to apply these settings, but don't worry, any of these settings we can tweak at a later stage under the settings tab. And I'll show you where that's located in just a second. Now at this point, the docs do appear. These is just the stream information and also the chat that links to your Twitch. I'm choosing to remove these at the moment, but if you want, you can dock them to the left hand side. And as I said earlier, under the tools tab, you can rerun that wizard to auto configure at any point. As I said earlier, you can tweak any of these settings at any point in the settings tab. 
including the bitrate, including the frames, including the canvas size as well. So that's it. OBS is now set up for you and you can get going with adding scenes and sources and start designing your stream.